So we're going to move on to our final topic. And yes, I am letting the public know right now. We, you probably already noticed in the feed, we lost Nintendo Guru. I don't recall seeing a message from him. So his internet might have just went out. I don't know what happened. So we're just going to continue. He Sadly, he missed the final topic. Um, so let's just go with this final topic. This is going to be, I, I think, another quick one. But one that's important when we're talking about Retro Week. Because we're going to have to examine the retro consoles. Which ones were our favorites and why? Uh, and for this purpose, we're going to go anything before the DS era. So that would include Game Boy Advance and all that stuff. Uh, anything, uh, uh, anything before, well, we're going to go before GameCube era just because the only caveat, I was going to include GameCube in there, it, it, but I decided to go against it since GameCube games were natively playable on Wii. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm not saying those generations are the same thing at all, but I feel like it kind of muddled it, the line a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, plus Twilight Princess also kind of helped muddle that line even more. So we're gonna we're, we're gonna go with anything before DS, anything before GameCube. Um, Game Over Jesse, why don't you go first on this one? All right, I'm I'm having a bit of difficulty deciding because I was just gonna say the GameCube, but it's pre GameCube mm-hmm. because with the GameCube. You can cheat a little bit. You can put in the Game Boy player yeah, yeah. on the bottom so you can play all of the handheld Game Boy, Game Boy Advanced games. Um, I mean, you can still but, cheat if you want. Yeah, um, but I'm going to go with... Uh, I'm going to pick a system that doesn't... like Just by choosing the game specifically made for that console... Not necessarily the games made uh, for like another console that could also be played on it. So, no Game Boy games being played on a Game Boy Advance, sure. or whatever criteria no, you want. No Game Boy games being played on like a Super Boy with the Super Nintendo. Yep. So I'm going to go with the Game Boy Color because. You have three different Zelda games. <laughs> I knew that was going to be <laughs> Oracle, Oracle of Seasons, Oracle of Ages, uh, Link to the Past. I don't think there was any remakes of the NES games until the Game Boy Advance. There was also uh, Link's Awakening DX. Yeah, and then you have the Pokemon games. You have some really great Mario games. Um, you have Metroid. You have a lot of the top tier Nintendo franchises plus a lot of uh, interesting third party games so I'm going to have to go with the Game Boy Color uh, I would pick the Game Boy Advance but I don't want to pick the Game Boy Advance because I would be including in all of the Game Boy Color games <laughs> so, <laughs> well, yeah. uh, so so Game Boy Color your own restrictions. Yeah, that's cool, that's cool. Um, and just to let everyone know before we continue towards the end here of this segment, uh, we're going to talk about uh, which of the classic systems that we chose, in our opinion, um, has the best third-party support. Something that's always a constant debate with Nintendo today. Back then, they had a lot of it. All right. Yeah. Eric. Uh, really quick, uh, uh, yeah, Nintendo before. Guru messaged me, said his internet went out, but he will try to be back as soon as it's up. All right. Sounds good. Thank you for the update. Yep. We'll see if he gets in here. Yeah, Eric. <laughs> At least to say goodbye, right? Advertise right, right. the YouTube channel. Yeah, we'll have to do a forum. Yeah, it doesn't come back. But... Um, I will have to go with the console that has probably some of my favorite games of all time. Um, and that would be the sixty-four. Um, as stated, Conker's Bed for a Day is probably one of my favorite games of all time. Um, Mario sixty-four, Banjo Kazooie. All the ones we've named, I mean, and then the ones that we didn't get in the top five, which Snowboard Kids. <laughs> um, to me, surprised they didn't make a strong push yeah, for that. Uh, yeah. It, it, you I, didn't think anyone else would agree? No, no. You could get me on your side. Yeah, I know. But um, I, I think there's a lot more bigger games than Snowboard Kids. Um, even though it is, again. It's Snowboard Kids. It's Snowboard Kids. Um, for those of you who haven't played it, I recommend it. Um it better be on an N64 classic. Yeah, game. right. At least one right. of them. One of the two. Right. Um, yeah, so that's that's my pick. I, I definitely would go with the 64. Because okay. that's that's my wheelhouse of, of gaming. 
This is actually a really tough one for me. Because the first system I ever played was NES. Mike Tyson's punch out. After my dad, like, you go to the bathroom, I'd take over and get mad at me because he'd be at Mike Tyson, who he never... No, well, he did eventually beat, but I remember vividly he kept losing to him all the time, getting frustrated. He would go to the bathroom, then I'd take over and lose, and that'd be, like, his last continue. And he'd have to go to that to the beginning. He'd get so mad at me. Um, <laughs> and I have so many fond memories. You know, I already talked before in a prior segment about, like, track and field. Um, you know, Doc Hunt, Hogan's Alley. Oh, God. Hogan's, Hogan's Alley was so good. Uh, obviously, the original Mario Bros., the original Zelda, Zelda 2, blah, 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 blah. Like, the, the list of amazing NES games. On it. And that's just, like, looking at a lot of Nintendo stuff. There was a lot of great third-party games on there as well. Um, and then, like... Part of me wants to go with Game Boy because I played more of the Game Boy. The OG Game Boy. I played a ton of that mm. because the NES wasn't mine. It was my dad's. And I was a kid and I was always on the road. I was always on the bus going to school. I was always, uh, we'd go on like family vacations and drive like hours away because that's that's what our family did. We, we would drive, no plane flying or nothing. We would always just drive like, go to the Dells. Okay, well, it's a, it's a long road trip, especially when you're a kid. Play Game Boy. Mm. Play, play, play. Had all those silly light accessories and everything. Um, magnifying glass, even. That <laughs> the was printer, my dad's. The printer. That, that was my dad's. I didn't have the printer. Uh, but my dad had, like, that crazy... Like, when, whenever you guys look up Game Boy, like, crazy Game Boy accessories, and you see, like, the picture of, like, the giant magnifying glass with the extra speakers and all the extra lights and all that. Like, that was my dad. My dad had that set up, and I kept using it, and he kept getting mad at me because he wanted to use it because he'd lay down on the couch at night and want to play, and then he'd go to use it, and all the batteries are dead in it. And I'm like, sorry. <laughs> Whoops. Sorry, I was using it. Um... I think I broke the magnifying glass on it at one point. Um, yeah. But, anyways, that was probably the most unnecessary added thing was the magnifying glass. I didn't really need that. I understood the purpose. I just thought it was like, oh, this is like the ultimate Game Boy. Right. Um, then you got like that N64, man. Just, you know, all the games that we've already talked about. Uh, the, you know, You mentioned Game Boy Color. I know Nintendo sometimes considered that the same generation as OG Game Boy, but it, I mean, it had games you couldn't play on the OG Game Boy. So, uh, just just a fantastic system. Game Boy Advance. I think Game Boy Advance is probably the system that gets the least amount of love these days when people look back at classic systems like NES, SNES, N64. Oh, everyone loves the Game Boy. What about the Game Boy Advance? Mm-hmm. The start of Advance Wars? But here's the thing. The reason I can't pick Game Boy Advance isn't because it doesn't have a fantastic library. It's because as I'm thinking of my favorite systems, I literally can only think of Advance Wars right now on Game Boy Advance. <laughs> um, that's why I loved Advance Wars. But like all of the other systems, I can think of other things. Mm-hmm. Um, and while the NES started it for me, Game Boy is what got me hooked. N64 just, I mean... There's a reason that, maybe regrettably so, I skipped the PlayStation 2 era. We played the crap. Or the PlayStation era, even. I pl- we, it, the 64 was all day, every day. Any excuse to play it. I'm going to go with the Super Nintendo. Mm-hmm. Because, one, I think at least to, day, to date for Nintendo systems, the Super Nintendo has the best overall game lineup. Uh, just top to bottom. No, that doesn't mean there's not crap on it. Of course, there's crap on every system. But even like, you know, I talked about some of the movie tie-in games I liked in some prior segments that I knew weren't going to make top fives or top tens, but I just wanted the same because I didn't think they were that great and they need to show. Like Xena, I'm sorry. Xena might not make my top five, but it could make my top ten. And then 64. That's how much I like that game. Um, as pathetic as some people might think that is. Uh, but But movie games were almost like perfect on the N64, or on the, sorry, on the Super Nintendo. Home Alone 2, fantastic game on the SNES. The Lion, Lion King. King. Aladdin. Yeah. Aladdin. Like, if Aladdin was good on Game Boy, it was fantastic mm-hmm. on SNES. Um, it, it's it's a very special system to me, and I, I can't mention it without bringing up Secret of Mana. I was going to say. Uh, my favorite game of all time until Breath of the Wild released, and everyone tells me, you're crazy. Secret of Mana 3 is the best one. I know. I get it. I understand. I've never played it. It's never been localized. Just like Mother 3, Square Enix, make it happen. <laughs> it's not going to happen at this point. They might remake it and bring it over. I have no idea if, if the Secret of Mana remake as well. Which, by the way, bring it out the Switch as well next year sometime. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, even though I don't actually like the direction they've taken with the visuals. But that's a story for another time. Uh, 
the Super Nintendo just has so like I literally I'm I'm going through my memory of all the Super Nintendo games I played. I can't even remember a bad one. And I'm not saying they don't exist. I just didn't play them. I mean, even Jurassic Park mm-hmm. loved it. Illusion of Gaia was one of my favorites. Oh, that was so good. And I can't forget. I can't remember if it was Final Fantasy II, Final Fantasy III, Final Fantasy IV. It's the one with the airships. Oh, yeah. Because it was yeah. a different number in Japan. So I remember at the time it confused me. I was just starting to get into the internet then and realizing all these other Final Fantasies existed, but it was a different number in Japan. So like I kept getting... I Even to this day, I, could, I know it's red. Uh, the sticker on it was red. So I think it was Final Fantasy III U.S. edition. I think. I could be wrong. So don't quote me on that. People are... If you know it's like Cedric's in it and like you're in the airships, you're the captain of the airships... Um, that's all they get started. to on. include ghosts and goblins. Ghosts and goblins. Oh. Oh. <laughs> See, this thing, if I had a computer in front of me, I'd be just, list, just listing off zillions of games. <laughs> uh, the SNES to me. Wasn't Zombies 8 My Neighbors on there too? I think so. Yeah. Uh, I think there was a, a game on there for the Burbs as well. Yeah. I remember playing. I believe it was that. It might have been on the NES, but I think it was SNES for the Burbs. The Burbs from the 80s, but um, I think there was a good game for it on the SNES. Uh, there was just so many good movie tie-in games, so many good show tie-in games, uh, and just so many, like, all the third-party support, like, all the best third-party support, I should say, uh, essentially came to it. I know there was a big debate back then, the big war over SNES versus Genesis. I totally understand that war. Genesis was a fantastic platform. Mm-hmm. Um, but SNES, to me, uh, it was everything that the NES was but better. And had all the third-party support that the N64 started to lose. I think in terms of heavy hitters, I actually like the heavy hitters on N64 more. And I think I like... But but the library overall, I like better on SNES. Mm-hmm. It had all the third-party support, and all the games were basically fantastic. Uh, N64 had some third-party support, but not everything was great. I mean, Super Tech Mobile, mm-hmm. SNES, oh, baby. Baby. Mm-hmm. It was still one of the best football games out there. Probably better than Madden today. No, <laughs> actually Madden's better. But but Super Tackle Bowl is still really, really good. Um, I mean, I, I, I could start getting into my fanboyism over uh, NFL 2K5. But uh, maybe someday we'll have yeah, sports. Right. Maybe we'll have a sports theme. Today, yeah, there you go. Which will be very hard to talk about since uh, it'll be like, for a while we'll be talking about, okay, Madden and Quarterback Club and Tiger Woods Golf and this and that. And all of a sudden those games just stopped coming out. So now we got Mario Tennis, Mario Golf, yeah, Mario right. Soccer. Right. <laughs> do, we, do we throw Mario Party in there? Is that a sport? And then we got eSports to consider. Smash Bros. Melee. Yeah. Um, that would be very interesting if we had a had an all-sports podcast. Yeah. Um, anyways, yeah, Super Nintendo is just special. Mm-hmm. Just a spe- I, I, I think... Out of every system Nintendo has released, even including their handles, even if we include like today's system with the DS and 3DS and all this stuff, um, and the Wii era, I think that the library on Super Nintendo was literally the perfect balance of everything anyone could ever want on a system. Mm-hmm. From the types of games, to, uh, to the quality of them, to the variety, uh, to the sheer number of them. I felt like every game that came out mattered on that system. I always look at the Super Nintendo with its name. You you could take it literal with, like, the Super Nintendo basically had all of the same games that began on the NES, but they were most of the time just better versions yeah. of those games. Super so, size. like, you get the original Zelda, then you get A Link to the Past, which is essentially the same game, just Zelda with better. more to it. So it's like you get like the super versions of all of these games, and I yeah. think the name is very literal for the console. Yeah. So that's that's and how I look at it. While the eight bit style, I feel, is like this classic art style, I think sixteen bit is timeless. And we're seeing that today. Like a lot of indie games, they don't go for the eight bit; they go for the sixteen bit. Right. right. Uh, because that sixteen bit era. There's something about that art style that's massively appealing, mm-hmm. uh, even to this day. And, I, and I, I don't actually know what it is. And the thing is, I know I say art style. I know the various games have different art directions and everything. I mean, there was even crazy things like Star Fox that went, like tried to go all 3D on there. It was nuts. Um, in fact, the whole reason Star Fox 2 didn't come out is because they didn't want to overshadow the N64's 3D capabilities. Because <laughs> it took advantage of a new chip on Super Nintendo, and because of that... 
uh, it would have looked as good as some N64 games. So they just didn't nice. want to re- no, no, have it out there now. Um, and it's versions of it have been out on the internet for a while. But uh, yeah, the Super Nintendo was just special. I can't, like when I think of what's the flaw of the Super Nintendo, the shoulder buttons, no, they were great. The shape of the controller, they massively improved that over the NES. Got rid of the sharp edges. Mm-hmm. Um, the D-pad was fantastic. The four buttons that are still standard to this day. Mm-hmm. Like, every single system uses that four-button layout. Um, I mean, I think they were actually the first ones. That, there might have been a PC company that had a controller that did it first, but I think Nintendo's one that standardized the four buttons. Uh, just like Nintendo wasn't the first one to make the D-pad, but they're the ones that standardized it in gaming. Um, just a fantastic system. <laughs> Fantastic system. What, what's up? What are you laughing at? I was, I was just thinking back because you were talking about the, the D pad. Yeah. And it made yeah. me think of how the Virtual Boy has two D pads. Oh, my God. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, the Virtual Boy. What? I mean, that would have been counted, right? If someone wanted to go with the Virtual Boy. That could have been their favorite their favorite system. I'm changing now. <laughs> I'm changing. Yeah. I'm changing. That thing that, that eats my eyes away with its red lasers. Um, Yeah, it's. I don't think. I don't know. That's just the way I say it. I guess I'm, at this point, I think I've made my argument pretty clear on why I think Super Nintendo mm-hmm. is better than all the other classic systems. Um, yeah. I, I, that's the thing. I like... N64's top heavy. Mm-hmm. You get like 20, 30 games in N64, like way better to me than almost all of the SNES games but Secret of Mana. And maybe even that Final Fantasy game I love. Okay, I, I have a question for but, you. Yeah. What's up? Which version of the Super Nintendo... Wow, I had the U.S. gray and purple thing. I don't know. I don't even know about multiple versions. I mean, I know there was like different territory versions, but if there was multiple versions of the U.S., I don't know. I only had the base gray with the purple buttons, like they uh-huh. released with the SNES Classic. You're about to school me. See, I, I don't actually know my education on the hardware. <laughs> no, so, like uh, I was just uh, remembering. I had the one that had like the button on the left, the button on the right, and then you'd press down and pop out the cartridge. Oh, um, that, that was not. But bad. there was also the. Uh, I, I don't really know how to describe it. Like the smaller, slimmer version that my grandmother used to have. I always thought like. Because I was so used to the Super Nintendo I had, so whenever sure. I went to her house and played on hers, I was like, "This is, it looks so odd, <laughs> almost <laughs> alien." Yeah, yours yours would have looked odd and alien back then. All I ever saw yeah. was the one I had, where you had the two slide buttons um, for start and reset, and then or power on and reset, and then you physically pulled the cartridge in and out. There was no yeah. I no, he says that I do remember. Yeah, so the thing is, the thing is, when he said that, I'm like, I remember something like that existing. Yeah. I just didn't know anyone that had one, mm-hmm. so I never saw it. And I, you know, I was just getting on the internet, and I definitely wasn't. I was playing a lot of video games. I wasn't reading about video games on the internet. Like IGN, I think existed back then, a couple other sites, but I, I didn't really go to them often because it was so slow to load. I'm like, oh, I'm <laughs> going to take this on to load. I'm loading up MSN Gaming Zone and playing Age of Empires online, right? Um, or loading up AIM and going on those chat rooms <laughs> back in the day. Um, Casa or LimeWire or oh, well, those and downloading your music uh, overnight because. You can't tie up the phone line. Yeah. Wait, <laughs> the well, later on, Napster, so that yep. got shut down. Yep. It was there when MySpace started. Uh, good times back then. Good times. But yeah, it's definitely... Um, I don't know. I, I guess that that's... I kind of put my stake to the SNES. Uh, obviously, you guys out there, let us know what your favorite retro system is. If you want to, for some reason, throw GameCube in the mix, I guess I'll let you. My, my, my disclusion of GameCube might be considered a little weak. Uh, just because, you know, of the Wii. Should the Wii really disclude GameCube? But uh, you guys let me know what you think on that. Uh, so to end this segment up, I'll be up before we say goodbye, which of these classic systems, in our opinions, have the best third-party support? Hmm. This is tough. Super too. Nintendo. Oh. Okay. I would say. Um, okay. Because the Nintendo 64 was one square and it just stopped. So, yeah. Okay. I would say Super Nintendo. Yeah, they'd probably you that, SNES? Yeah. I, you know, I from what I've thought I knew about like third parties and stuff. I know like Atari had a ton of like just random games being made for it, and then I know from there I kind of feel like it just kind of 
each system kind of just lost more and more. I, I think more and more gaming companies just kind of folded or did, you know, just stop making games. And so, you know, there wasn't as many third party to begin with. So I think it kind of just died, you know, as the systems went. But I don't, I see, I don't know the difference between the third party support for the NES versus the SNES. It, to, so to me, it would be one of those two. Okay. Um, so obviously I just got done making a long winded argument for SNES and I think SNES had, had the best in terms of quality of game third party support uh, combined with sheer numbers uh, but what I had the you know I mean I guess the question is you know which had the best it, it's hard to argue against the SNES to me uh, but I feel like a strong argument especially if you combine color and Game Boy together can be made for the Game Boy mm-hmm. Uh, there was a lot of third-party games that came out on that as well, including Final Fantasies and all that stuff. Uh, a lot of the popular things from the NES era also came out on Game Boy and Game Boy Color uh, for third-party. And there, there can obviously be a strong argument made for NES because NES saved the gaming industry from a crash. And at the time, if you, you were anyone who still was interested in making making video games, you made it on the, uh, the NES. Mm-hmm. Whereas the SNES technically had some competition with the mm-hmm. Genesis. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, I know there were some exclusive third-party games in Genesis. I don't know all of them off the top of my head. Uh, just like there were some exclusive third-party games on SNES. Uh, and NES was severely more popular than the SNES. Again, primarily probably because of competition. There really was nothing competing with the NES. But I know there were other systems, but honestly, everyone knows it was the NES and nothing. Right. NES is what saved the industry. There's like no debate over the the NES being the only thing that mattered at that mm-hmm. time. Uh, which is why I feel like it, it's really any of those three. I don't think N64 can make any sort of stake. Mm-mm. I think it had some fantastic third-party games, but there weren't very many. Mm-hmm. Uh, even if you want to throw GameCube in the mix, really? I mean... Prince of Persia was on there. That was pretty cool, but then you know that that was like pretty bad. It was pretty bad on uh, pretty bare bones on there. Game Boy Advance probably had a ton, but as I said, I can't think of anything but Advance Wars right now. <laughs> <laughs> Dodgeball Advance. Oh, Dodgeball Advance. Oh, yeah. but yeah, I mean, so I think it comes out between the the NES, SNES, and the the Game Boy slash Game Boy Color. Everyone keeps going SNES. It's hard for me to disagree, but I I think there was almost more support on the NES and possibly more support on the Game Boy slash Game Boy Color since they also had higher sales. <sighs> you know what? I'm not going to answer. <laughs> I can't decide. I Because like, I don't want to make this a clean sweep for the SNES because I think there is a strong argument to be made for mm-hmm. the NES and the oh, Game right. Boy in Color. and. Uh, we spent so much time talking about mm-hmm. NA, SNES the last you know ten minutes or so. I, I just want to throw this up to you viewers, right? So I think for our panel, we obviously have SNES as as the general best third party supported platform for Nintendo. Uh, you know, because it's a, it's the best third party support, and if the best third party support means you know quality with quantity, mm-hmm. you know, I, I understand the argument for SA, but you want to talk about best third party support in sort of sheer numbers it might be the nes mm-hmm. uh maybe you prefer handheld gaming so game boy mm-hmm. uh getting all those nes games plus getting a whole bunch of other stuff like you, as you were even going through the game boy that's like i played that on nes i played that on nes I yeah played right that on yeah NES. yeah yeah <laughs> do that's i count these games because i played these all on nes yeah i didn't really play like them on dr. Game mario board. i, I, played I didn't, them all I didn't on play NES. dr mario yeah. on game boy um so you guys let us know in the comments below what uh you know just in general what's your favorite system from the retro, the retro systems, and which system had the best third-party support? And do you even care about third-party support? Okay. I mean, it's a there's, big debate today that. whether the Switch needs third-party support or not. Um, whether the Switch needs virtual console or not. I think everyone says, oh, it needs to have virtual console, but eh, does it need it? I don't know. Maybe that's a bit for next time. Yeah. Anyways, folks, thanks for joining us here on the Nintendo Prime Podcast. It's been It's been fun. This was... What do you guys, you know, before we exit, what did you guys think of this retro week concept? It was interesting. Um, Something different. Was, We've never done anything like this before. No, it gave me the chance to uh, really talk about classic games instead of just yeah, whatever is popular this week. Because at Nintendo Prime, we spent a lot of time talking about Switch. Switch this, Switch that, Switch this, Switch that, or well, well, lack I mean, of crossplay that has to do with Switch. In a way, rightfully so, because the Switch is. Exactly. I mean, massive right now. The, the the Switch is the hot ticket right now. Our YouTube channel kind of sort of started around the time Switch hype began. 
Uh, this podcast started shortly before Switch Hype began, but we knew the NX was coming. It wasn't revealed yet when this podcast started. Um, I mean, one of our early episodes was even talking about, you know, Switches Online and, uh, mm-hmm. you know, that they were going to charge for it and what that would ultimately be. Uh, it, it's it very interesting that we base a lot of our, our, our the rise of Nintendo Prime around Switch. But I want to remind people that even though all three of us love Switch, there is more to life than Switch with Nintendo. Oh, yeah. And I know some of you guys are going to come back and say, hey, Nate, have a 3DS week. We'll see. That very well could happen. Especially since I think uh, once once I once I feel it's no longer an opinion and it's a fact that 3ds is like on its deathbed, <laughs> I guarantee you we will have a podcast with at least one topic, if not the entire podcast, dedicated to 3ds. Um, just so to, to look back at that. But yeah, you guys let me know. Also, out there, the fans watching, how what you thought of Retro Week, and if you like these themed weeks. I feel like I talk about a lot of news on the channel every day, so uh, I think it's more fun to take this podcast down this kind of direction. Mm-hmm. You guys let me know. We hit our Patreon goal, which is why we're able to do this every single week, which is why I like coming up with these unique concepts like this. Mm-hmm. If you guys have any unique concepts for themed weeks or any sort of topics you'd like us to talk about, we, we do take fan submitted topics. You do not need to be a Patreon backer to do that. You literally just put it in the comments of any of the episodes on uh on YouTube or any, you know, if you're a Patreon backer, you can obviously put it on our, our post on Patreon about it. And speaking of Patreon, if you ever want this podcast, the entire, t- the entire thing in audio form, it is available exclusively to our Patreon backers right now. They get it a full day before any of the video versions come out. So if you want to, you know, listen to this on a long trip on the road, literally, I think it's $5 per month is the tier that gets mm-hmm. you it early. Um, a dollar per month gets you access to some other things we do, but uh, yeah. Check, check us out at patreon.com slash Nintendo Prime for more of that. Uh, I want to thank our guests, even though one vanished. Uh, internet issues. It is what it is. Mm-hmm. So I guess we'll mention it first. The Nintendo Guru. Uh, we'll have his, his YouTube and Twitter stuff pop up here on the screen so you guys can go check him out because I don't actually remember what it is off the top of my head. Um, go Jesse, check him out. I think it is just the Nintendo Guru. Yeah, the Nintendo. Oh, well, I think it's Nintendo Guru on. I'm sorry, no, the on YouTube. Uh, but whatever, we'll have that pop up. And go support him. I think he's got like a 1,000 followers or so. It would be sweet to see him pop up to where we're at, man. Get, get, get 20, 30, 40, 50,000 followers. Mm-hmm. That guy is high. I didn't hear of him until the other day, and then I started looking at his, through his content. He's doing crazy stuff every day. Mm-hmm. Like every day. He, he is so passionate. He'll get like 40 viewers. He doesn't care. He loves yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. He loves it. You got to uh, start somewhere. And he's passionate. And if so, you can't tell yeah. from this podcast, if you liked his opinions, like we had to say, he's knowledgeable. Yes, yes, yes. He knows what he's talking about. That's what I like. I, I like having guys on to know what they're talking about because sometimes I don't. I mean, he corrected me today. That's awesome. Correct me all the time. You guys correct me all the time in the comments. It's okay to have someone correct me to my face, kind of, sort of, across the camera. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and then, obviously, Mr. Game Over, Jesse. Yes. Uh, follow me on Twitter, YouTube. Everything is slash Game Over Jesse. Um, Doing a follow-up to the most popular video on my channel, the uh, top five canceled and unreleased Mario games. So Ooh. if you're interested in that, please look forward to it. Can, can you tease a... Is it Mario? Is it, is it more Mario games? Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, another uh, set. Uh, another... There's, uh, okay. there's, there's one called... Uh, it kind of has to do with today's uh, video that we had a discussion of earlier. Sure. Um there's a game called Yoshi Racing, which was the team that made Star Fox and Star Fox 2 tried making, uh, they described it as a, what could have potentially been if it didn't get canceled, the very first 3D console game. Okay. Huh. Uh, like true 3D because yep. Star Fox, uh, I guess they used some weird stuff. But anyways, it was, uh, they described it as a mix of Super Mario World and Super Mario Kart, but it was supposed to huh. involve Yoshi, and it would have essentially been uh, like Super Mario 64 without Mario and with Yoshi instead. It got canceled, but there was an interview with Miyamoto where he said that after seeing the footage, it inspired a lot of the game mechanics that you can find in Super Mario 64. And then they took the idea of the game and changed it from Yoshi to Croc something. 
Oh, okay. Uh, so the game did release. They just like reskinned the character huh. into a crocodile instead of a dinosaur. Well, there you guys go. <laughs> like, uh, go check out his stuff. He does some great stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, I I met Game Over Jesse through his Zelda theories uh, back when I was working at Zelda websites covering stuff, uh, and he worked at some Zelda websites as well. Uh, actually, if you go over to the Tony Gruger's YouTube channel, I believe one of the things they actually talked about was how he got started, how Game Over Jesse got started on YouTube, um, mm-hmm. and went over his history at, at Zelda Dungeon and some other stuff that happened in his life. Um, it's a great story, and, and to see see you go from where you were, I, I remember when you had like hardly any subs, and we were posting a couple of your videos up on Zelda Informer. Um, yeah, it was uh, crazy. Uh, Zelda Informer, obviously you and all the other people from... Many of the websites, even Go Nintendo, yeah. uh, helped out a lot. Yeah, Go Nintendo doesn't post as much as uh, Go Nintendo. Correct, Go Nintendo still posts fan content, but now it's only from like really big people. Yeah, um, I don't know when he decided to stop helping out the little guys, but he probably had to make a decision at one point. Uh, yeah, he's probably getting of, like a hundred different yeah, submissions a day. Yeah, he, he. I mean, I he used to even respond to emails, and now he like. I don't know. I, I'm probably a smaller deal now than I was at Zelda Informer, so. Um, but yeah, cool. Well, go check out his channel. As I said, Game Over Jesse has a lot of fantastic stuff. If you want to hear his backstory, head on over to Nintendo Guru's channel. He's got a, a recent video up featuring Game Over Jesse. Uh, and obviously, Nintendo Guru, as I said, daily content, does a lot of live stuff, does a lot of, you know, just crazy, crazy stuff. People on camera having conversations about Nintendo. I, I, I'm actually so impressed by what he does over there because... I struggle to get three live streams out a week. This guy's out there like every day, just going nuts, <laughs> talking about Nintendo. I don't know. I mean, I know I get multiple videos up, but like it's news, right? It's like what's happening. He'll like have this in-depth conversation about the design of the GameCube controller. It's just interesting stuff. He knows what he's talking about. And obviously, Game Over Jesse over there. He, I I have a hard time describing your YouTube channel these days. <laughs> Yeah, it, it bounces back and forth. Like, uh, it, it originally it began as, it was a Zelda Theory channel, yeah. Right. And then uh, you just get tired of doing the same thing over and over. So I just started focusing on news. And then uh, some of my favorite videos to watch are talking about the history of certain video oh, yes. games, video games, series, franchises. So it's just a mix of everything right yep. now. Uh, news when I can do it, discussions when I can do it, uh, canceled games when yeah. I can do it. I think yeah, I think your biggest, uh, your most viewed videos are obviously like your top five. Uh, you, you're, you, I'll say they're unique top fives. Um, you don't see a lot of top fives like like people will be like, oh, these are the top five games for the Switch this past year. Like, I hate saying that I'm gonna have a video like that. Um, but so it's like everybody else. Whereas you'll like you just said, top, you know, five more, you know, unknown canceled game Mario games or whatever. Like that's just crazy. Mm-hmm. Um. Like you just literally talked about a game that I never even knew existed, right? Yeah, I, I didn't even know about it until I started doing, doing the research. research. Yeah, yeah, that, that's and that's what's crazy. I like that. That's the one thing I like about your videos. My videos are a lot of off the cusp, uh, not a lot of research, outside of like obviously the news and verifying stuff. You are like, I know, I got this idea. I got to spend like days and weeks, and months <laughs> gathering information and mm-hmm. getting it right, which is probably why you have videos that get like four hundred thousand views, and I get videos that get a thousand views. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, it's, it's only myself. a few videos that have yeah, I know. I that know. amount of views but I've seen uh, like I already did the top 5 cancelled Mario games Yeah. so I didn't really want to do it again but it turned out to be my most popular video it has close to yeah, chase the views. it's getting close to 800,000 views oh, oh man wow. I mean so, uh, I have you I beat like, I, have, I have one that's got a, got a, a million views 1.2 my body is ready um, yeah, <laughs> from eight years ago or whatever, it's a you finally crossed the million mark. But you're getting eight hundred thousand. You're gonna get to a million way faster than that video did. Yeah. So with the in the video, like whenever I look at my real time views, on some days it's still the most watched video for that day, even if I post a new video. Jeez. So I was like, well, if this many people are interested in it, yeah, if you follow up, it'll be a suggested can... video. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that's that's awesome. Well. I, as I said, I go check out his channel. You know, as I said, it's kind of all over the place at times, but the content he does make is really, really, really good. Uh, his old, his old Zelda theories, or, or even new ones he might have come someday. Uh, he, he just even he's starting to talk about a lot more than Zelda. Obviously, uh, I'm glad to see you expand your channel. 
Uh, I know we've talked in the past about, you know, doing what you want because it's your channel, right? Um, and that's kind of the way I have my channel. Like, I want to have a live news show one day, so I'm going to do it eventually. <laughs> eventually. I need a real camera for it. Uh, I, I can't use my phone for that. So, um, All right, folks. Well, that's going to wrap up the Nintendo Prime Podcast, episode 35. I want to thank you guys for tuning in. You can follow me on Twitter, at Nate Chance. Uh, or Nintendo Prime. They're both technically me, but yeah, we, we separate the branding a little bit. At Ninty Prime. Uh, you could also check us out on Patreon, patreon.com slash Nintendo Prime. Facebook, I think it's facebook.com slash Nintendo Prime something. Or I think it's just Nintendo Prime. Uh, the one I was thinking of is Twitch, twitch.tv. If you want to see some live streams, it's twitch.tv slash Nintendo Prime TV. Just like technically our YouTube channel is youtube.com slash C slash I'm going to get this wrong Nintendo Prime YT yes I actually right. own the Nintendo Prime one but it's on a dead account so anyways long story behind that thanks for tuning in it's been fun retro week is over next week the Halloween special nice alright <laughs> right. bye everybody actually, sorry it's not the Halloween special I got, the, I'm a week, I got a week ahead of myself I was going to say the week after is the Halloween special I don't know why. It's a, next week is actually our patron special. Right. Our, our $20 backers. Uh, we have three of them. I don't know if all three are going to make it on for next week. If they don't, then they're going to leak into the Halloween special, which is fine. All right. Who doesn't want to get all spooky? All right. Talk about some uh, Halloween-esque Nintendo yeah. games. <laughs> you can guarantee Luigi's Mansion's coming up. It's oh, happening. yeah. For sure. So, I just, uh, spoiler. Spoiler on a future podcast. We're talking about Luigi's Mansion. Uh-oh. All right, folks. Catch you in the next one.